Hey everybody, Chef Tony here. Um, it's Friday and my kids are crying for spaghetti and meatballs. So we're making spaghetti and meatballs. We're making my grandmother's meatball mix right now, getting it going, uh, just seasoning it up right now with a little salt and pepper. Um, it's fairly simple mix. I'll post the recipe later on. Uh, basically what we have here is a mixture of veal, pork, and beef. We have a sofrito, which is sauteed onions and garlic and some uh, red pepper flakes. We have Parmesan cheese. We have pecorino cheese. We have eggs. We have breadcrumbs. We have parsley. We have basil. That's, that's basically it. Um, I'm going to mix it up now. I'm going to form my balls. I'm going to sear them off. And then I'm going to put them in the Pomodoro sauce that I usually make too. I'll put the recipe for the Pomodoro sauce, recipe for the meatball mix, and we'll go through how I make it from step by step, okay? Talk to you soon. When I was young, I was always in the kitchen with my grandmother, and this is the first thing I made with her. So what I like to do is have my kids involved with me when I make this so they can teach their kids. I have my daughter Amelia helping me out. She's opening the cans of tomatoes. That's what I used to do. I used to help my grandmother farm the meatballs. This is what I did when I was a kid. I always weigh out my meatballs so they're all the same size. I know my grandmother never did that, but it's just one of those things I like to do so they all they all look the same. Uh, my grandmother had a knack; she could just eye it all out. But I'm just I like them to be consistent. I'm crazy like that. I like to make four ounce meatballs. They're a little big, but you know, if, if I'm only doing spaghetti and meatballs, I like them to be big. If I do like a Sunday gravy where I have other things in the sauce, I make them a little smaller. This is how I've always done it. I portion them all to the right size, so they're all four ounces, and now I do the shaping. This is a trick my grandmother taught me. You take a little plate, you put a little olive oil on it, get your hands with a little olive oil on it, and then you shape your, you just move your ball, meatballs around in your hands like this, and they come out nice and smooth and shiny because they have a little oil. And then they'll go fast too. And these you could do ahead of time, you could do them the day before, you could even sear them off the day before. Hey, look at that, nice, shiny, beautiful, round. You don't wanna have any cracks, you don't wanna have any seams. You want them to be nice and round so they stay in, stay whole inside the sauce, because if you have cracks in them, they'll fall apart inside the sauce. As you can see, I've shaped all my meatballs. They're all four ounces each, the way I like them. Um, I have my Pomodoro sauce going over here. I have my onions and garlic sweating nice with a couple of bay leaves. So now I'll start searing off my meatballs. From the recipe that I gave you, you get 24 four ounce meatballs. Or if you wanna make more, you can, just do the math. But uh, what I like to do is I'll get the, uh, this is just regular canola oil. And I'll just get it hot, but not too hot. And then I'll just give them another little roll. And uh, what I'll do, just because be careful, the oil's hot, is I'll just place them in with a spoon. And then I'll sear them nice. And then I'll put them back on this tray. And then I'll wait for the Pomodoro sauce to be ready. And then I'll just put them in the sauce. Now, this Pomodoro sauce is vegetarian. So it can be fine just like that, it's a base sauce. Now what I'll do before I add the meatballs to it is I'll add some red wine and a little bit of chicken stock to it also, just so it could cook all together and get a little more juicy. Again, if you add all this stuff, it becomes meatball sauce. Pomodoro sauce by itself, vegetarian, meatball sauce. To make it meatball sauce, I add the red wine to it and some chicken stock. But as you can see right here, we're adding our meatballs to our nice pan. I love these black steel pans, they're my favorite. You can do anything with them. So I got my meatballs searing over here. I got my onions and garlic sweated nice in olive oil. 
I'm gonna add my tomatoes. And now, I'm just gonna let that cook down. I just added my tomatoes, I'm gonna give it a quick stir. Okay, so you see I'm getting a nice sear on the meatballs. It's very important, because if you get a good sear on them, it holds everything inside. It holds all the juices in, holds the flavor in, and it keeps them intact when they're inside and they're braising in the sauce. Because basically we're braising right now, okay? Um, you know, people see this recipe and think, oh, I can't have it, it's got breadcrumbs in it, it's not, it's, you know, it's, it's not gluten-free. You know, I have a lot of friends that have celiac that are, you know, have gluten issues, so all you do, substitute gluten-free breadcrumbs, substitute gluten-free pasta, you know, or even make the meatballs with gluten-free breadcrumbs and put it over polenta, amazing. It's all about the flavor of the sauce, flavor of the meatballs. I've made them with gluten-free meatball, gluten-free breadcrumbs before, and you can't tell the difference. Okay, now take a look here. You're gonna see, this is what you have, is like a nice seared meatball. All the way around, nice and crispy. A uh, nice sear all the way around, nice crust. So I'm gonna start putting them here, and then I can finish off the rest of them. Just like this. Pomodoro sauce has come to a boil. I've lowered it to a simmer. I threw a handful of uh, sliced basil in there. Now, another thing that a lot of people don't do, which is one of my favorite things, I always save my Parmesan rind. It has a million uses. Maybe not a million, but there's, there's so many things you could do with them. One thing I always do with any Pomodoro sauce, any meat sauce, anything, soups, my cooked beans, anything, I take the Parmesan rind and, and I put it in the sauce. It adds so much flavor, and, and people usually just throw it away, they toss it, but now, just, now that the sauce is going, they just lay it right on top, and just let it cook with the sauce the whole time. Now over here, take a look. We have all, most of our meatballs are seared off. This is the last of them. Now, another thing I wanted to tell you guys about, you know, on, on Sundays, when I used to cook with my grandmother and I used to make the Sunday gravy, uh, you know, it was my job to help her with the meatballs. And for breakfast, we used to fry off, we used to take the meatballs and make small little meatballs and fry them off and cook them with the eggs. Amazing. You can take these, this meatball mix and just fry them off like little ones and use them for appetizers, like little past hors d'oeuvres and you don't have to cook them in sauce or anything, just, just like little fried meatballs. Amazing, you serve them with anything. Okay, so now I'm turning the Pomodoro sauce into meatball sauce. Adding some chicken stock, some red wine. Now I'll take my seared meatballs, I'll put them in here, bring it to a boil, lower it to a simmer, let them braise till they're soft and tender, while that's going on, I'm gonna roll out some fresh pasta, make some cheese and meat trays, and then we're ready to go for tonight. You guys take care, see you in a little bit. Meatballs are done, they've been braising for about two hours, hour and a half, sauce is ready. Made some fresh spaghetti. You want a great recipe for pasta, check my YouTube channel, you got my pasta recipe there. Um, you get an attachment for your stand-up mixer, you cut the pasta like this, no problem, easy. Got my boiling salted water here. I'm just gonna drop my pasta, then I'll make my plate. So we're cooking fresh pasta. Fresh pasta cooks in no time. Regular dry pasta, 10, 12, 15 minutes, depending how you like it. Fresh pasta, less than a minute if you have boiling salted water. While the pasta's cooking, the other day, my buddy from Sonio Toscano, Matteo, came by, brought me some beautiful burrata and some pesto. So I made this amazing salad. It's got the Sonio Toscano burrata, pesto, the uh, artisanal extra virgin olive oil from Fateo, um, the aged balsamic vinegar, 10 year. I just got some organic baby arugula, threw it all together. Okay.
Okay, so I just pulled the pasta out of the sauce. It's freaking incredible. Look at this. Fresh spaghetti. House made. This is the Pomodoro sauce turned into meatball sauce. Remember, little red wine, little chicken stock, a lot of meatballs, a lot of love. One, two meatballs per person. A lot of pasta. And uh, remember, this is going to last for a couple of days maybe. Who wants to cook tomorrow? Um, that's good. And then what I like to do, I'll top it with a little fresh Parmesan. Look at this, guys, huh? Tell me you don't want to eat this right now. And uh, I like a little pecorino, too. Who doesn't like cheese on their pasta? Me. Don't listen to my daughter. And then... Uh, a little bit of my favorite... Uh, Fattoria, extra virgin olive oil. Sonio Toscano, my boys. Thank you, Mateo. And uh, that's dinner tonight.